<laughs> All right. Hey, guys, uh, my name is John Cassidy. I want to welcome you to our Blab. It's the Naked Truth. It's a series that we started uh, a few weeks back, and uh, we're starting to get a little bit of momentum. We're starting to get some people starting to follow us and uh, really uh, jumping on this journey of getting naked with us. I know that sounds crazy, but it's a lot of fun because what we do is we talk about the truth about different topics, um, and we don't hold anything back. Uh, we get and I'm going to um, introduce our person, uh, Gina Tremarco, today, uh, uh, and she's from Pivot 10. She has a couple companies, uh, Carolina Improv. She also does coaching, corporate coaching, and um, I just uh, um, I feel blessed because I, I always I get I get some of her time once in a while. She's super busy, and she spent a little bit of time with me yesterday. And you know what? Off the cuff, we were talking about what is our our naked truth going to be about this week, mm -hmm. and uh, I said let's do it on improv because it helps your business and it helps your life and it helps uh, your communication uh, just grow and flourish. And Gina, I want to I thank you first and foremost for taking the time coming on, but I also love the fact that you've taught me about this. So uh, I'm going to let you tell a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Well, I really would like to make it more about you than me. Um, you gave me a great introduction. So thank you for that. Caroline Improv Company is the company I started back in 2008 and that's kind of spiraled into several other companies we have a training division which is our pivot 10 company and a coaching division which is gene and company uh so we keep pretty busy and it, it it all spun out of improv uh but what really kind of got you know our conversation yesterday to talk more about you john part of what we do in improv is we talk about other people and we make them look good so taking it taking on it off of me and putting it on you is really step one of improv. And I'm sure um, Kathy would agree with that. Kathy a, a, is experienced in improv and we'll hear from her in a couple minutes. But you know what really yesterday when we were having coffee at Starbucks, and by the way, John's extremely busy too in all his businesses. So um, what came <laughs> out of that conversation yesterday was you said when you, when you, you know, we've known each other for many years. Um, and you said you really didn't know what improv was. You've known me all these years and you thought it was strictly comedy. And yeah. case in point, um, we don't have a whole lot of people on this blab today. And that is kind of what spurred the conversation to do this because of the frustration of people are like, oh, it's comedy. I'm not going to tune into that because it's not what we do in our business. And that's too much fun, which is why we rebranded our business to pitch 10 results. Um, because companies want results and they want outcomes. They don't want to hear about funny games and they don't want to hear about comedy. We talked about this yesterday too, that um, somebody who he heard me speak said that she's been ignoring my proposals for three years because she thought I was a comedian and she didn't want to book a comedian as a keynote speaker, but then she heard me speak and said, oh, you're so engaging and educational. You're exactly what we need. So in our improv world, the frustration is people just think we're fun and games. Um, and that's kind of what spurred this conversation today. And I would love uh, to hear from Kathy on this and have Kathy introduce herself and tell us about herself. Well, you're very generous. Thank you. I, f I feel like the interloper, but I feel welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm Kathy welcome. Klotz. Thank you so much. No, I, um, I'm Kathy Klotz Guest, and my company is Keeping It Human. And as Gina said, I'm a fellow improviser, studied sketch and uh, and um, short form, long form uh, uh, improv. And for many years, I worked in, in corporate America, and I found a way to take the storytelling I learned on a stage and combine it with the business storytelling I do for companies. And, and Gina's so spot on. Improvisation is about the principles of being present in the moment and making your partner look good and focusing on others and all these really rich things um, that people think improv comedy. And so there's so much that you can bring into business every day that is great stuff from an improv stage. and. That's where I think improvisers like Gina, myself, and a whole bunch of whole community uh, around it has tried to do that. And so yeah, we do have fun. I'm not gonna lie; it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and, and, and I always tell tell people, yes, improv will make you funnier. But you know what? It's gonna make you a better listener. It's gonna make you a better speaker, a better communicator. And that's I think where it gets really interesting. Yep. And it just happens to be a lot of fun too. Exactly. That's awesome. Thank you. I. Uh, I, I, I did a little uh, uh, test last night. I had about 30 people at a dinner 
and I went around uh, randomly and asked uh, people individually, hey, man, what? when I say improv, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And I want to say it was 95% um, comedy. Yeah. And um, uh, I was guilty for it as well. And I think that uh, I think that after attending one of your classes that I want to I want to go through the whole gamut of them is that I did the intro one just to see it. And it taught me so much more in, in being in sales. My background in sales for 26 years is that I understand that you have to listen. Mm -hmm. You got two ears, one mouth. Listen so much. Um, however, there's a difference between listening and really engaged. Right. So. I, I learned that through through that that simple introduction class that you have, and what I found amazing was it's almost if I have to relate it to something, it's almost like um, we send we own a printing company, we send out proofs to people. People look at like the label, right? They look at it. Oh man, it looks pretty, but they don't read it. They don't engage with it. And I think a lot of times we as humans, as communicators, we're listen we're listening and we're present, but we're not fully engaged, you know? And I think that, is that the biggest part of improv, improv improvisation? I, I think it's a one big part. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now what just happened to me. Um, I'm, I'm working, I'm blabbing in the house versus my office, which is behind my house because the Wi-Fi is better. And as you were talking in my peripheral, I see a car coming down my driveway and I'm like, who the hell is that? And I literally left. <laughs> I totally checked out just now because I'm like, why yeah. is there a car in my driveway, right? Like this happens to us every day. Yeah. I'm not fully present in, the, yeah. in that second, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that- You died off for a huh? second. You're there. You got, I got you, you died off for a second. Yeah, um, so I think that's that's one of the biggest challenges. If you, you know, there's so much that we, we learn from the skill set of improvising, right? The soft skills, the being really 100% present in the moment and the listen. The um, A lot of the talks I do around sales um, is about shut up and listen. And when, <laughs> when you shut up, it's like shut up and make money. When you shut up, everybody leans in. I was just at a rotary meeting with um, my financial advisor and I, <laughs> Yeah, lean in. <laughs> she um, she's one of our improv students. She takes classes with an, uh, another teacher, and she was giving a presentation at Rotary today. And and when she was done, she said, "How'd I do, Coach? How'd I do?" And what I was really impressed about with her, because she's she's a pretty shy person, that she was put in an uncomfortable environment. For one, we didn't have um, we were put in a we we were at the ballpark. Let's put it that we're at the Pelicans ballpark um, that they put our meeting there today. There was no way she could do a PowerPoint presentation. The, the eye lines, eyesights were bad. We couldn't really see her. And here she is giving a presentation and she had a piece of paper to read off of to keep her on track. And when she got lost, she just went silent. She stayed calm. She looked at her sheet of paper. She took a lot of time looking at her sheet of paper and the whole room leaned in. And then when she was ready, she continued without wow. without any like freak out or you know you know you can tell when yeah. people are really nervous when they speak, but everybody leaned into her because she didn't freak out about it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. You know, it's uh, well, Kathy. How long have you been doing improv and adopted it? Uh, and and what? How did you? Uh, you know, because yeah. once you have that culture. I guess. How, how long has that done? And what has it done for you as far as growing, growing your business? What part of the country? I'm in you Silicon Valley. So I am in the epicenter of uh, Google land, the Google complex, if you will, <laughs> in uh, San Jose, California. Um, gosh, I've been doing improv and I, I did, I have done stand up and I still do, but I've been doing improv specifically for probably 17 years, 18 years. And so I started in, in, in uh, what we call short form, which is, you know, uh, whose line is it anyway, really short games going to long form, which is fully improvised 30 minute plays, which Gina will appreciate. Um, and I studied sketch for many years and then about seven, eight years ago, uh, after my son was born, I actually started my business. And it's interesting because 
coming out of high tech marketing, I was able to, I think, be a better brander, a better listener, a better at storytelling, all these different things that a marketer has to do because, uh, you know, three or four times a week I was doing shows and improv and I found a way to blend these two. And, and for me, when I started my business, my goal was to take these worlds and say, you know what? We can all be better. We can be better communicators if we actually take the foundation and the principles of improv and bring that into our everyday communications. We can all be better. And I think I heard Gina talk about this and I was I so related because when I first started, yes, people kept thinking improv comedy, improv comedy. And then when they really started to understand that it was about really listening accepting the offer yes andy and we talk a lot about yes andy what somebody is saying instead of yes but and denying people understood oh my gosh that conversation the energy changed i had a better sales result i had a better conversation with my boss i had a better personal conversation with my partner that it, be, it becomes a way of it, it, yes and is a mentality it's a way of thinking about the world it's not just improv comedy it's a way of showing up in the world yeah. it's a mindset um, so yeah. it's a mindset it's a mindset it is, you know, so let's talk about some people. We got some people that are, are looking at us a little bit and listening yeah. to us. And let's tell uh, folks uh, about exactly the yes and concept, because, mm -hmm. wow, that that mm -hmm. really took me to a whole different yeah. level with my listening. Skills. Yeah. But once again, guys, if you're brand new on, I want you to know the next person is going to tell us a little bit about the yes and is Gina Tremarco. She uh, owns the Carolina Improv Company, and it's not all about uh, being funny. Uh, it ain't a, it, it ain't a joke. <laughs> It's about serious business. It's about taking your business to the next level. She has done it and she's helped a bunch of people do it. Tell us about the yes and. I well, got goosebumps. <laughs> just like Kathy said, the yes and it's a it's a mindset, it's a philosophy, it's a way of, of living, it's a foundation of everything that we do. Um in improv, whether you're on stage being funny or you're on stage in business. Mm -hmm. Yes and is about acceptance of ideas, acceptance of offers. And and you'll hear us use the phrase offers. It's like whenever someone makes an offer to us, you know, our first gut reaction, even me, <laughs> who trains people in this, my inside voice is yes budding all day long. It is a practice, right? It's like I'm constantly having to stop myself from yes budding people. It is like I don't know why we're wired for that. Um, there are studies on how our brain operates. Like we just have this natural reaction to be like, great idea, yes, but we don't have money, but we don't have time, but we've done it before and it didn't work, but I don't want to do it, but that's a new responsibility for me, right? We go into this but kind of thing and we say the yes because we're just pandering of like, oh, that's a great idea, but no. So we have this thing of yes budding. So yeah. yes and is really a way to turn it around and go, yes, that's a great idea. And and adding your contribution to it so that you collaborate to a compromise. That you know, that's how I look at it. And we can use this in everything that we do. We can use it in our relationships. We can use it. This is a great thing in sales objections. You know, salespeople go in with this mindset of like, I'm going to go sell this one thing. And when people object to it, they, they kind of give up. And instead of yes anding in the process of, okay, yes, that's too much money for you. And going to the next level of trying to explore where, what's the value proposition? What what did you miss out on telling your prospect? Did you stop and listen to what they need? Like I just brought this up at a group. Um, I run a women's business group in Myrtle Beach. It's like a mini think tank. And we go around the table and we each put a challenge on the table to get advice for. So every woman has to like say, have you tried this? Have you thought of that? And so we all go around. I never... I never put a challenge on the table because I'm the organizer. Um, and so I want to give versus take. But at the end, this one, I said, I'm challenged here. I'm trying to create some other products in my coaching business that would be, you know, more entry level for people who can't afford us at the higher rate. And they were telling me things I didn't want to hear. Like they were telling me things that that I just wanted to say no to and I wanted to yes, but 
the beauty of listening to them was it gave me perspective of where they're coming from. So in that listen, instead of me reacting with like, you guys are crazy. I took, <laughs> you know, I took it with me and I'm like, all right, how do I make that work? Because that's what they need. That's what they're asking for. They were asking for some very specific services that we don't provide it that way because we don't think it's best. But what if you took the time to listen to people on what is best for them? Why don't you take their offer and then compromise together? I know that was a really long answer. Yes. And I believe that the way to really grow your business is by uh, doing this concept. See, when we're in sales, what I really found out was that um, – by using this technique that you talk about, let's check this out. As I have found out to be, be a good student in, in business and you could become a good teacher eventually, right? And I, I listened to that concept and I'm and I, I really um, uh, proud of what I've accomplished with my sales ability, but you can always get better and better and better. So I hear the yes and deal. And what I immediately figure out is that by using the yes and, from improv is that uh, we, we immediately are agreeing with the prospect, right? And then we're getting trust and confidence, right? Because think about it, if you're the buyer and somebody says, yes, you say, man, he gets me, right? Right. And the end is just helping me understand maybe an alternative or a different strategy right. or, you know, it's very cool. So anybody that's listening right now, Gabe, thank you for joining us. And I see Wendy on there. I appreciate you guys joining us. We're doing the Naked Truth about improv and how it's not a joke. It's serious business. And if you guys were we serious, out to we were serious about our improv. Serious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can make it fun, you can make it serious. Right. But if you guys are tweeting this out, we got a little wow. gift for you in a little bit. Kathy, you want to talk about it a little bit? The yes and, or, or if you have to teach somebody about improv, imp improv right now, our friends, our, our viewers, what would you tell them? You know, I, I, I think yes and. Well, I tell people it's going to fundamentally change the dynamics of the conversations that you have. Imagine if you could actually, and, and you know, Gina's so spot on, and even the improvisers who've been doing it a long time, we catch ourselves in that yes, but we're like, ah, oh, God, you know. Um, but <laughs> it, 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 but it's so it's so powerful because the minute you raise that threshold of awareness of how much you do it, you realize, wow, I may be shutting people down. And and when I become conscious of it, it's really going to change the energy to to the point you just said, and you said it so well, John, which is. In a sales situation, whenever you need convergence, collaborating, brainstorming in a sales meeting, when you're trying to get convergence and agreement, yes and brings you closer, yes but drives you apart. So it can fundamentally bring you together. And I tell people, just try it. Just try yes and for a couple of days. And put a, put a rubber band on your, I tell them, put a rubber band on your wrist. And every time you say yes, but snap it. Now your wrist is going to get very sore, but I promise you this. Gonna, yes, I promise I you. That's awesome. And, but I, it works because I did this with a couple of sales execs I was working with and it raised their level of awareness. It got them to awesome. realize how much they were doing it. And just that little shift. You know, one when, when, when person came back to me and said, not only did it make a big difference in their in their selling and building rapport with the client because the client felt validated and heard, it made a difference in the way they were managing their 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 team. It made a difference in the relationship with his wife. <laughs> and he was like, mm -hmm. just something so foundational and small can change the positive energy in all your conversations. And that's a really big gift. That right, And we talk about gifts and improv, giving offers, we call them gifts. It really is a gift. The energy that you bring in the presence of really listening is such a gift. Um, and yes, and just one little small tweak has this huge impact in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love the, the snapping of the mm. bracelet and yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a marketer by heart. So immediately <laughs> I thought about creating yeah. um, those little wristlets that have maybe yes and or your brand on there and uh, mm -hmm. be able to give them out to people for that just, purpose. Yeah, I was just going to, I was just yeah. going to ask Kathy, do you, do you have something branded that you can give out at, at trainings? I do. I actually do. I actually created a little kind of keeping it human kind of thing where people would snap you it. Snap it. I love and they that. did. And I'll tell you, it was very comical because people were, and I was like, don't shoot each other's eyes out, please. <laughs> 
know what was very funny is that once people got past the laughter and the nervous, like, oh my gosh, it was really amazing because people by the end of the day would catch themselves. They And that is exactly what it was meant to do is that raise that threshold of awareness to where, oh my gosh, I didn't realize, Kathy, how much I was butting people and I was shutting people down and no wonder people stopped engaging with me. And now when I say yes and, the energy that people bring to the conversation is, is transformed Informational. And I think that's, that's a great thing. That's just a great thing. You know, we, we, we all know that person that is yeah. the, is the yes butter that we run from that. It's like, Oh no, it's negative. Yeah. Nelly. Like they're going to, they're going to, yeah. you know, you don't want to be that person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Debbie Downer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there were a, a couple things. Um, I was trying to take notes to remember when I wanted to come back to John, you know, you had, talked about that whole agreement factor you know people do like to hear yes because there's this very positive reception of like yes they totally get me yes they're listening to me what i do want to clarify because this comes up a lot and i don't know if it comes up for kathy when i get resistant people in training in mm -hmm. corporate there's an attitude of like we can't agree to everything people want you're telling me to say yes because we do a literal yes and exercise we can't say yes to everything, Gina. And so I want to clarify that, that there's a difference between agreement and acceptance. Yes. So the yes is really about acceptance mm -hmm. of what someone has yeah. to say. It doesn't mean you have to agree. So I want to be really clear. This is what I've learned from getting some ornery people in my training. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty amazing that because I, I was yeah. writing words and I just wrote down acceptance. Agreement really means acceptance. And, you know, and I, I, what I love about our series, The Naked Truth, we go in a lot of different directions, a lot of bunny trails. But when you, <laughs> you think about um, <laughs> because all of the marketing. <laughs> 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 Yeah, when you go to all of marketing is every Monday psychotic. and Friday, Kathy. Every Monday and Friday, two o'clock Eastern, we have this crazy naked truth. Join us. I love it. It's go fun. On. It's so much fun. It well, I love the fact that we got people on here getting naked with us. It's great. <laughs> so the uh, the best part about marketing and sales is, in my uh, in my opinion, I think it's a lot of psychology. Yeah. Right? yeah. And if you break down some of the well, yeah, and I wasn't a good student. There was a couple things that resonated with me and I kept in this little noggin that I'm able to go back on. But Maslow's hierarchy of mm -hmm. needs, mm -hmm. like one of the most found, the basic foundation is acceptance, right? So for me, uh, it, it helped me the yes and with every part. So with I've got teenage daughters. That's the great <laughs> thing, right? And when I've got my girls that are, Fighting, or they come to me about, well, Haley said this, and I'm able to tell Hannah, I go, yes, and I swear to you, I, that has been the, one of the biggest growing parts just to be able to, she, because, man, dad gets me. Dad's on my side, right? So mm -hmm. that's a that's an awesome, awesome stuff. You know, yeah. yesterday, I'm going to go down, I want to start shifting a little bit, because yesterday you shared with me something pretty cool, and, and if, I, um, if I let out any of your secrets, smack me in the mouth. <clears throat> is that you talked about uh, uh, um, uh, making up stories, storytelling, uh, mm -hmm. but it was more of a fairy tale. I don't yeah. think that's the word you used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, I did use fairy tale to kind of make it more understandable because it is a, it's a it's a story arc, and Kathy is familiar with it. It's a story spine. And it's the traditional arc of a story. And we do it in the fashion of once upon a time with and, and the moral of the story is. So it, it takes you through the beginning, the middle, the end, the, the consequences, the turning point of, of a story. And so this has become, and I'm sure Kathy has a lot to say about this. This has become like I was telling you yesterday that I'm, this is probably the hottest request I get right now for talk topics is I've got um, a talk topic called mission to message and what's fascinating about this and this is actually even in the most recent 24 hours somebody was messaging me at 11 o'clock last night not understanding my talk topic so many companies i'm surprised do not have a mission statement 
They yeah. don't know what the mission of their company is. They don't know what the purpose, what the why is. And so this talk I'm doing is for a group of HR specialists. And they love the topic initially of mission to message because when you know what your mission is, you can create a message. When you know what your message is, you can create a culture. When you can create a culture, you can attract the kind of customers you want, the kind of employees you want, but you need to be able to tell the story. And so what I found really interesting in these conversations and email at 11 o'clock last night, well, these HR people, because my topic says, bring your mission statement with you, because what we do is we take the mission statement, we bring them through this improv exercise to, to teach them how to be storytellers, and then we have them create a story based on their company mission and core values. And it is so transformative every time I do it. And the reaction was, what if they don't have a mission statement? I go, great for me, they'll become clients. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll teach them, you know, it's like, that's where it starts. You need to be able to tell the story of why somebody should be working with you. Absolutely. Kathy? Yeah. Your thoughts, yeah. Kathy? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, well said, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, I'm always amazed at how, because I, I walked into a company not too long ago and they had already gotten to 300 people. And I said, well, what is, what is your mission statement for the whole company? And they said, we don't have one. And I said, how do you have one? And you're at 300 people. And so some, think about it this way. Somebody was willing to write a check, a VC and fund them and they didn't have a solid mission statement. And I was astounded. And I said, well, mm -hmm. they, but part of the reason why they brought me in is that they plateaued. And I said, aha. And I think for them to yeah. get to that next level, they really just needed to get their story straight. They didn't have that. I, you know, Gina nailed it. It's like without that story, if you don't know who you are, there's no way in hell your customer is going to know who you are. That just can't yeah. happen. It just yeah. can't happen. Your employees don't know what story to tell. Your customers don't know who you are. That's a real danger. And you know, being in John being a marketer, it's like you can't you can't differentiate yourself if you don't know that story. You, you know? you've, you've got to be. And I think part of the um, successful folks that are are in sales uh, are they can relate to almost any type of personality, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think part of the improv 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 improvisation. Um, philosophy or, or, or culture is to being able to identify that while listening, you know, because there's a there's a skill set here that's learned for sure mm -hmm. that you've got to be able to almost do two things at one time. And you and that's almost impossible. Right. <laughs> to focus on two things at yeah. one time. For me, one thing at one time is almost impossible. <laughs> right. And, but, but but two things because you're listening, but you got to be able to be reactive. And it's not about thinking about what you're going to say. It's about how and how to react. Uh, one of the posts that I put out this morning to promote the Naked Truth was that 10% um, uh, is what happens to you. 90% is how you react to it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that some people are going to take that in a negative way and some people will take that in a positive way. I'm just talking about life, whatever it is, your everyday meetings with your em employee. Somebody, somebody drinks the last bit of water out of mm -hmm. a water cooler. How are you going to react? You're going to be pissy about it and bitch, yeah. or are you going to go pick up the next bottle and put it on there? You know? Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry. Woo. So uh, that's a, that's a whole nother naked truth topic. Yeah. A person, you know what? Seriously, put that on the list. Personal accountability. That, yeah. that gets in under my skin. Personal yeah. accountability. Yeah. No, own your own story. And if you're not, if you're not, uh, know managing your own story and you got something's wrong because you are your story and uh that takes personal accountability so preach it preach it preach it brother john <laughs> 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 you know, it's like amen can i get an amen amen, amen. <laughs> Going with you guys today. So one, one of the things that I think is important that you guys talked about knowing your message and, and the improv, I want to bring everything back also to the improv. Improv will help you um, create a, a message through the yes and or through the storytelling. But what about a personal message, right? Yeah. Don't you think that, you know, now yes. the buzzword in business, and I don't care if you work for somebody uh, that you have a job or you're part of a team, I think it's super important to build your own brand. And the folks that can think quickly on their feet 
And and I think that's what really folks that are good improv they they they're quick thinkers. They're wit. We're called witty, right? Yeah. Man, you're so witty, yeah. right? What does witty mean anyway? But yeah. I think that if you can create your own brand and you get better, then you create your own message, and your then your own message. You have you have your own. You can attract attract likes uh, yeah. attract uh, like attracts like. So yeah. with that, if you're working for have, somebody and you have your message and, and, and that stuff, you become more valuable to the company you work for, ultimately moving up that chain, right? I have a lot to say about that one, John. <laughs> Love that. <Yeah. laughs> um, a, good one. a couple things. A good one. Yeah, a couple a couple things have come up with this. Um, again, recently, I've been doing this this session a lot this whole messaging storytelling session and i was working with a group of believe it or not campground and rv park owners and there that we were working on their stories which was fascinating because they were so aha moment of like why do we not tell our story to our guests and why isn't it on our website which was great but we also in that group had a lot of employees and in the moment, you have to be able to adjust as a facilitator. So some of the employees who were sent to this conference said, I don't own the business. So I don't really know what the mission is. So how do I do this exercise? Because they had to do the exercise. And I quickly said, all right, let's make this exercise about you. What's your personal story? Why do you work there? Why are you so passionate about working for that campground? Let's tell your story. And I think that's a really important piece of it, that as we represent a company, right, we do represent a company, whether you own it or you work at it. What is your personal story for being there? Number one. Number two, people buy you, right? Everybody knows that. There's a book on it. People buy you, especially if you're in sales, right? You're still representing your company's story, but at the end of the day, there are companies out there that we don't like. Let me name one. Spirit Airlines. Oh I hate Spirit Airlines. There are other companies I hate, like, you know, utility companies. Like, you know, there are companies that I hate to give my money to, yeah. but they provide a service that I need, so I give them the money. But there may be employees there that I love that I'm still going to work with those employees because the employees have a great personal brand. So you could still work for a shitty company, but if your personal brand is a good one, people are going to buy into you. So I think having a personal brand is extremely important, especially if you just work for the company, you're going to move to another company because people are going to remember you. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. yeah. um, what about Kathy? You, uh, you deal with some, probably where you're located, probably deal with some bigger companies. Like you said, the one company had 300 employoys. Yeah. Do you get, um, do you get personal do you both of you guys are coaches do you guys ever get on the personal level like like people reach out to you and say listen i want to um uh want to talk i want to talk with my spouse better i want to understand you know what's the biggest thing is i got two ladies here so it's you can be beat up on the guy here. I think the biggest the biggest problem or, or 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 obstacle maybe in some relationships uh with our spouses is that we well, us guys tend to don't listen right or we're, we're accused yeah. of it because i'm doing something else doesn't mean i'm not listening yeah mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah right so do you get any of those people that 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 come to you and say hey man how how can i what can we work on because you said it earlier kathy yeah. is that it's like people's relationships get better not just at work yeah. but with their with your family. You guys yeah. talk a little bit about that and how you can get better with, with, with that. Yeah, we do. It, but it, it, and it's really interesting because usually the lead in is a business benefit. They want to get better at, at work. And then they discover um, that this yeah. translates to all areas of their life. It's not compartmentalized. So you will be better as a manager with your people, more patient, more present. You'll be more present with your kids, like your teenage daughters. And by the way, if, if you pass the, the teenage litmus test with yes and, you're golden. Um, and <laughs> my son's too young, but he gets it. And and I it, you, you'll you be better with your spouse. So it, it has a benefit that I typically start with the business one but they something changes when you when you create a yes and mentality and you're more patient and you listen and you validate and make people feel heard something shifts and people all of a sudden want to open up to you and you start to see this in all areas of your life and it just changes the energy of your conversation and i've never seen somebody contain it only to the business stuff once people sort of get the hang of it they go oh my god why didn't i know about this earlier 
And it just becomes really a, a something that changes their everyday communication, and regardless of whether it's business or it's personal. But I do love the stories when, when especially men, and I'm, I'm, listen, my husband will be the first to, you know, because I've just sanded him to death. <laughs> but I love when, when guys come back and say, you know, I really appreciate it because it taught me that I don't have to be right and they don't have to be wrong. All I have to do is be present and listen and yes and what they're saying. And that that validation, when somebody yes ands you, you go, oh my gosh, they heard me and they saw me. And they they that is enough for people to feel validated. And it's such a you know, a little thing that a lot of women already go, yep, we've been trying to tell you that. <laughs> but but it's interesting because that that just it you see people's face light up and, and they get excited, you know. Right. I have I have a I have a funny story for that. Um, well, I don't think my husband would find it funny, but he doesn't know how to get on blab, so that's okay. Um, Why neither? He, <laughs> um, you know, he we both own businesses, and so there's I don't want to say a competition, but you know, you 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 you're running your business all day, and you want someone to talk to, but if you have a spouse who also runs a business, it becomes yeah. a challenge, and um, and his is you know in the multi million dollars, mine is you know, on its way to that, but he'll come home with everything that's been going on. And it, in the beginning was so frustrating, but I just practiced the yes. And, and I just listen and I listen and I listen and I listen. And even my inside voice is talking, talking, I'm still present. And one day he came home and this exact thing went on. He just, he finally <laughs> stopped speaking and he goes, what are you smirking about? I'm like, I'm not smirking. He's like, what are you thinking? I'm like, I'm not thinking. I'm just listening. He's like, no, you're thinking something. I'm like, just listening. I'm like, well, okay. Well, I'm thinking, I, I hope you asked me how my day was. <laughs> but the fact that I didn't, yeah. I didn't speak. I just sat there and I listened. People, the way we're wired, yeah. we can feel it. Yeah. We can feel it. We can feel when people are not 100% connected with yeah. us. So, if we pay attention to it. it. You are spot on. That really interesting thing. It, and, and you've probably had this experience, both of you, um, John and Gina, it's, I had a conversation about a week ago and all I did was, uh-huh, yeah, tell me more, tell me about that. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really said very little and at the end of the conversation, <laughs> the VP says, this has been one of the best conversations I've had and he did all the talking. But just, <laughs> but just yes. the fact that they felt listened to because, yes. And he even said, at one point, I got very quiet in the conversation, and um, this was on the phone. So he goes, are you still there? And I said, I said, Paul, I'm hearing every word you're saying. And he was so stunned by that because he was so used to people butting, cutting him off, trying to get their point of view in. And he said, I don't remember the last time somebody really listened and didn't interrupt me. And he said, that to me was just phenomenal. And the fact that he just expected it because that's how his day goes. He was just like, yeah. wow. <laughs> it's instant, it's it's instant connection, yeah. right? It's instant yeah. connection when we stop to listen to people yeah. or stop to validate people. And that instant connection is what creates instant trust, which creates a wow, she's such a good listener. And then that creates an instant like, I want to do business with that person yeah. because they're such a great person, right? It's it's again that it's like shut up and make money. Shut up and and listen yeah. to people. Yeah. And care about them. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. lean in. Yeah. Lean in. Yeah. Lean in. Yeah. Lean in. Yeah. I, I want to bring it back back around to yeah. some some business stuff. Is that yeah. what I guess you know, folks, I, I what I've been promoting all all day about this about why the naked truth of that improv can help people's businesses because today is probably the most um, competitive days in business, right? Yeah. There's so many different options for people to buy whatever they're buying. And I think absolutely that we as business owners, as salespeople, as sales managers, we have to um, have our unique selling proposition, right? And part of that is that if you can become a listener, a better listener than you are a speaker, I think you have a competitive advantage. Because what will, when you do the yes and to your customers or your clients or your prospects, what do they say? They, I mean, you said it earlier. They're like, man, you know, Gina really, she really gets me. Kathy listened to me the whole time. 
you heard everything I said. And the other folks that are out there, I think a lot of times they want to impress themselves how they want to impress their customers how much they uh, they know, right? They want to hear themselves speak. I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna try this of bringing a guest on here. And uh, I just wanted to, last time we were on with Sean, she brought a friend on that wasn't too friendly. And, um, so <laughs> I'm gonna bring this for a second and hear what she has to say. Gary, where? So it's not a girl, it's a gentleman. Uh, yes. It's Gary. It's it's Gary. Gary. Yay. It's Gary. It's a, a we one. love Gary. Gary's, Gary's great. Guy. He's yes. one of the good ones. He's one of the good ones. He's a good one. Let's bring on Gary. That's awesome. I've never met Yay! Gary, but I hear so much about him. Oh, Gary's hey, the Gary. best. Gary's the best. Hey, Gary. Yay, Gary. We can't hear you. Oh, no, we can't hear you. Can hear you, Gary. Play with your audio. Yeah. So. He's in San Diego. He's my buddy. No, San Diego doesn't have any uh, sound going on right now, but that's okay. Yeah. What's up with the audio? Oh, no. All right, he'll come back. <laughs> Maybe he'll, he'll try calling, calling back in. Yeah. I hear great things about Gary, but I've never oh, met him. Oh, he's lovely. He's fun. Hey, I, that's I, what I, I hear. Think. I hear he's got a whole recess, adult recess thing going on in San Diego. Yes, he started a whole play thing about adult play and the power of using play. And I, I just lit it. And, and I forget the name of the website, but if we can get Gary back, I, but it's just a great thing, you know? And he does these um, meetups where he gets people playing, and it's just great. Yeah. Gary! Yeah. No! No! We're still going ah! Oh. Okay, he's probably the <laughs> Connector is the headset. Oh no, Gary. Sometimes those headsets. I don't hey, know. Hey, what if he's messing with us and he's improv <laughs> right now and just like <laughs> the old <laughs> movies? It's like very oh, clever. Yeah. Very clever. You fight good, young man. That's right. That's right. Right. It's fun. It's weird how sometimes audio can't work. Maybe or unless he accidentally um, muted himself. Because I finally learned how to mute myself. Yeah. No. All right. So still now. Gary, you try can your. Can you try your phone? Maybe call in on your phone. Mm -hmm. No, you should have that little. Right. Whoa. Yeah. Oh no, Gary. Gary will come back. So maybe so. he'll come back on another device. I so, hope so. The long, trying to keep the longevity of customers is one of the key key things in business today. I, I think that the companies that are out there for the one time sale, um, you know, that might be their model, but I don't think that really gives us longevity. Uh, I don't like that business model. I think you want customers, you know, lifestyle lifetime value of the customer. So. Yeah. How do you do that? And I think by honing your your skills, I think improv also teaches us how to be more creative. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw a statistic earlier today about, or yesterday about, I think uh, um, five, what was it? Five people in their 40s only have 5% of creativity and, and kids that are five years old is 95% creativity. Oh yeah, I've yeah. heard that. Yeah. Um, so, so part of the, uh, improv process is being creative. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's problem solving. Quick. Yes. Yeah. It also identifies leaders, right? Yeah. Because when a situation ha happens, I think part of uh, improvisation. Let's say a situation happens, a fire starts. You have to. You have to figure yeah. out. It's not all about um, business in the sense of um, yeah. uh, listening and selling, but I think you have to improvise. Somebody's got. Take the leadership role in an emergency. It mm -hmm. happened to me in, um, in Christmas time. Oh my you gosh. know, and a terrible accident, and uh, a car blew up, and I pulled over to try to get people out of it. But there was people standing around just looking. Like I heard this uh, statistic one time. Jonathan Henderson, our friend, shared this. Is that it's not a statistic, but if if you run out of the house on fire, every single neighbor will come out to watch you. Right. Wow. But I think in, in situations, knowing improv, it teaches you leadership skills on how to oh, gosh, yeah. whatever yeah. it is. So tell, tell a good story of maybe a, a situation mm. with a client that that was maybe 
Well, you did earlier about your, uh, Jane, you did about the um, RV folks, that they didn't know what improv was, but but they haven't yet. You haven't you, you haven't done your, your deal with them yet. I want to hear a story of where you guys went in, you helped the company understand and adopt the culture of improv improvisation, and now they, they, they went to the next level because they were hitting maybe a lid, and now they went to another level. Can you guys share anything like that? I have a I have a partial story because um, it's actually still in the works, which is really kind of interesting. I uh, we do a lot of work within the medical arena, so I was working with um, a medical practice, a group of medical offices, and they brought me in for customer service training because they were getting complaints from patients. So we actually, part of our service, we actually secret shop them to, and I went through the process as a patient to really experience it. And, and then I ended up developing a, a training program from scratch on empathy based customer service, how to really trigger your first, your self empathy. If you can, if you can practice self empathy, then you can be more empathetic. So I created that program for the group and it was 80 people in the room um, for three different medical offices. Long story short, they were, they were definitely a broken organization and there was a lot of pain in the room. And they actually asked me to deliver the secret shop report, which was very painful. There was crying. It was, there was tension. It was a horrible, I was sick from it. I, you know, I was stressed out from it. And at one point, you know, it was a two day, it was a two day training and it was a half a day each day because they have, they were required to do eight hours of training, but I knew eight hours would be too much on them. So day two comes along and they are, they're worse than they were the first day. Nobody would interact. Nobody would participate. They were resistant. And at some point when I said, you know, we had maybe an hour left in the day and I said, let's talk about some of your takeaways. And someone finally stood up and said, is anything ever really going to change here? You know what? You're, you're great, Gina. We love this training. I've learned a couple things, but is anything actually going to really, truly change? Or is this just more lip service? And at that time, the medical director stood up and said, and freaked out. Like, I don't think that's Gina's place. Like, Gina can't answer that. I'm like, no, 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 I got this. Thank you. Because I was so irritated at this point. I went on a soapbox and I said, you know what? That is a great question. Thank you. What's your name? Rose. Rose, I want to thank you for saying what everybody in this room is thinking, but mm -hmm. didn't have didn't have the guts to say right now. And you could just hear the whole room breathe. Like, thank God someone said that. And I said, you're right. Is anything going to change? And I looked at like the CEO. I'm like, you tell me, is anything going to change? I'm like, and then I turned it around and I stopped the curriculum that we were working on and said, Let's talk about change. What do you want changed? And I stopped the curriculum. We went into a brainstorm session with 80 people and we charted the change that they want. And then we talked about who's going to own the change. Yeah. And then we had to wrap up. And as soon as we were done, HR ran up to me and said, we clearly need help in leadership. And in that time, the CEO left, the HR director has left. I've literally been chasing them now for nine months. But I finally yesterday um, got an appointment with the new HR director to pick up where we left off in training for them in the leadership realm. So it's it's a still a story in development, but it's an example of, that's another reason why Pivot 10 has, has formed in where, where it is in our different pillars of business, because we get called in for customer service and sales training, but their culture is broken. Yeah. And I can't fix your service or sales if your culture is broken. And so that's our new approach. We start with culture yeah. and then we work, we work up. So that's an example. Can you hear hey, me? Gary. Can you hear me? Yay. All right, cool. Yay. Third time's the charm. Yay. Gary, tell us a little bit about yourself. Welcome to the Naked Truth. I appreciate you on a Friday getting naked with us. I know. And, uh, <laughs> Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, Gary. Yeah, uh, I am a co-owner of a digital marketing agency called Tower 33. And as Kathy mentioned, I also help adults play. Uh, I run a yeah. site called uh, BreakthroughPlay.com. And the whole purpose of that, which I learned as we going into business for myself, is that uh, we need to play more. And when we play and use things like improv, it actually helps us be more resilient and open to change and better communicators, yada, yada, yada. You guys all get that. And so uh, what I do is 
Um, I go into companies that need to improve communications and uh, they're experiencing uh, high uh, turnover rates. And just like Gina said, we fix the culture. Once we fix the culture uh, through play mm -hmm. and, and things like that, then everything else for some reason just gets in line. Yeah. So, awesome. so yeah. let me, what part of the world are you at, Gary? San Diego, sunny San Diego, where today it's mm -hmm. 72 and sunny. <laughs> Well, we are like totally West Coast, East Coast going on in the house. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me let me ask this this question. And I think that uh, I don't want to say a blanket statement, but I, I feel that maybe West Coast companies on the West Coast are a little bit more progressive on uh, accepting new um, new techniques and and and, and open a little bit open minded uh, than maybe some of the traditional businesses on this side. And, and I, I don't think it's a West Coast or East Coast thing. I just the companies that I deal with. But how do you get around somebody that is so business oriented and they think in profit, 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 and they hear the word, word play and uh, immediately from a business standpoint, I think they may assume <laughs> That play means no profit, no productivity. What do you? What, mm. how do you and and I get what you're doing. And I, <laughs> I just saw. I'm being devil's advocate for a second. Totally get it. And uh, that is the one thing that I go in and I say, well, "What's your current challenge?" And I use a mix of uh, emotion and data. So most of the time, when people think of play, you think of play. Oh, I'll play when the work is done. And let's be honest, the work is never done in this day and age. And so I say, "Well, how's your retention?" You know, what's your retention rate like? Um, how's your engagement rate? And then just throw some stats at it to say, hey, guess what? Did you know that it's, it costs up to like 125% of someone's salary to replace them? And imagine if we did a four-hour session uh, where we're going to get people um, engaging and actually they'll strengthen their bond with the company. Now you lessen the likelihood that someone's going to leave and you're going to have to replace them. And what's that to your bottom line? Yeah. Right. You know, I think it, it relates back to one of the one of the naked truths we did with uh, Peter Muir about recharging your batteries. Yeah. And uh, and I think so. Tell us like a little bit on how, what's a, a way that that an individual could, could play really. Like, you know what I mean? Like a, a technique that we recharge uh, uh, quickly, if you don't mind sharing and giving away a little bit of tidbits. So this is really cool. Um, if you think of any game that you play, whether it's a digital game online or um, an in-person game that you play with other people, you when you go against challenges, you go with an open mindset. And so that's what I help people develop is uh, a gameful mindset. I didn't invent this. Uh, a gal by the name of uh, Jane McGonigal, she did a whole TED talk on this. But a game that you can do, I call them power-ups. And one easy power-up that everyone can do is that when you feel like your battery is getting low, you can take three minutes um, if you're near a window, you know, look out the window and try to find something new, you know, like open your sort of childlike wonder and try to look, look around and find something interesting. And just by doing that, you tap into that childlike wonder and your brain just, just you know, you know, stops what you're doing and starts to recharge. And something, something simple. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Um, I'm going to do it right now while, because we are portable, we're digital. <laughs> <laughs> this is the naked truth. Oh, you gotta love John. Yeah. Yes, I love, love it. John. Yeah. So, yeah. We're gonna go out here and check out something. Okay. Oh, look good. at that beautiful scenery. Oh, that. look at that. oh. oh that's, that's beautiful. beautiful. That's beautiful. Where? Oh, oh my goodness! Wow. And uh, wow. this is just fun. Fun, but you're right, man. You know, is because we get so hung up. With and all of you guys are, we get so hung up yeah. with with business and and you got the guy saying we got to get production out, we got to get production out, we got to get production out. And I think if yeah. we have some of this fun and with the family that we spend most of our waking hours with, opposed to our regular family, and we make business more fun, more enjoyable, we I think ultimately we become more productive. Yeah, you know. So you got to have some games that you could do. Uh, with the improv, right? So you, how do you bring improv into your your your, your play day? Uh, one of the things that I was just doing with um, a facilitation that we did with Kaiser Permanente is it's called uh, Moving Bodies. 
And basically, yeah. one person goes into the middle, and then they start making a sound and a gesture. Mm -hmm. And then the next person comes in and does something complimentary to that until you get everyone except the last person. And the last person looks at whatever it is. And again, with improv, anything is right. You know, we're going to yes and it. And they're going to they're going to make they're going to name this machine, whatever this machine is. And then we all applaud it. And then we go on and we do it again. And one of the cool things about this, and I like to say magic's in the debrief. Like by just doing it, everyone's going to feel recharged and energized. But to get the science um, and everything start working is when you ask them how this applies to their current work environment. And in the case with uh, Kaiser, it was all about connection. Uh, that was the theme of the event. And this is where it's so magical. It's someone actually got up and they said, wow, for the first time, like I get why I'm here. Ah. And because these are groups of the people in their public affairs group. So they're all dispersed and they're all communicating versus, you know, via email and phone and stuff like that. And they're all doing their own little thing. But for the first time, they actually looked at the greater picture and they said, oh, I get it. Like, I get that me doing this in my cube all day is connecting to the person that's going like this. Yeah. And we're, and we're, yeah. Wow. No, no, no. That's cool stuff, man. What I love about the, about everything you guys do, all, all three of you, is that you're helping you're helping companies get away from the the regular just bullshit business. Right. <laughs> but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's 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 making them a better business. Right. Because it's a it's a top place. Maybe it becomes a top place to work because we have fun. And somebody imagine that you imagine get, getting a little crazy and you be the guy that you go. You, so, hey, Gina, how's work going? Man, it's awesome. I'm actually I'm, we have a blast. I look forward to it. when I wake up. I don't say, oh, God, it's Monday. I said, thank you, God, it's Monday, right? Imagine going to work like that because of what you guys implement, I think is amazing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit, or let's just go down that, that trail of, of, of what it has done for you personally, like a, your personal story. Have you guys all been outgoing your whole life? Um, because it takes an outgoing person. Uh, um, to, to, to do what y'all do. So, no, uh, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, Kathy, no, no, how about you? No, no, no. Um, I, you know, I'll tell you my story. I'm getting a little bit of echo. And, I, and Gary, I, I think it might be coming down your end. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, that's much that's better. Much yes, better. Thank yes, you. thank you. Um, um, I actually am an introvert. I have a little bit of an extroverted side, and I know that, that Gina and Gary probably will identify with that. I actually do, and I think there's this misperception, and, and of course we all know that introverts just recharge by being by themselves. They're not shy people, so I'm not shy, and that's sort of a misunderstanding that people still have. And uh, what it did for me was it really helped me really connect with people, with other people, just being present, listening, just yes standing and it strengthened my relationships i mean everything that my clients experienced i experienced and it was so transformative for me and everybody thought because i started out in stand-up and sketch as a writer everybody thought well you're extroverted because you do stand-up and i was like oh no you don't understand most stand-ups are actually deeply introverted because i'm talking to the audience and they don't talk back <laughs> It's a one. It's a one-way conversation, which is why so many, you know, introverted people are 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 do stand up, and it, it's 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 not a dialogue. It's a monologue. Wow. And what I found with improv was improv helped me really be present and listen because you know you make an offer on stage, somebody makes an offer back, and little by little you build on each other's yes and each other's till you built a beautiful scene. And it just made my life better. It made my relationships better. And I so get excited when I talk to somebody new to improv because I see it in their eyes. They're so hopeful. And I'm like, you have no idea the rocket ship you're about to launch on because it's going to be, it's going to change the way you look at things. And it's going to be amazing, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm excited for what they're about to embark on. So, yeah. What, what is the, you guys are all, all embrace um, improv and I, I'm with you on it 100%. How cool would it be if we could teach our kids uh, in school uh, improv? Mm -hmm. uh, do you mm -hmm. think we'd have some, yeah. um, some maybe new inventions that would come out? Because a lot of times I believe that a kid has an idea in school and maybe they're, 
shut down. And man, that won't work, yeah. right? And it shoots yeah. that kid down, boom. And then their 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 creativity just got down a notch. If we let's say the creativity was a notch meter in our body, and yeah. and and every time we said no, don't touch that, or it won't work, or you can't do that, that notch gets taken away, and eventually we become robots. And we go to we punch the clock <laughs> at nine in the morning, and we leave at five in the afternoon, and we get in that system. We're working forty hours a week for forty years of our life, and then we don't have anything to show for it. What if we got improv within the school system to teach these kids really how to think on their feet? Agreed. I think it would also it, help yeah. reduce vote for me, reduce bullying. No, don't vote for me. Say that. Say that again, Gary. It will reduce bullying because yeah, yeah, yeah. with everyone playing together, and there, a lot of science behind this is uh, when people are doing things in similar, and you're experiencing synchronicity on a like psychological level, you're saying, you know what? That person's like me. I'm actually going to see them in a different light. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've actually I've actually done a little bit of work in the schools, you know, like every now and then they have like a not the not your principal day, but the come in and like career show, yeah. you know, show the kids yeah. your career kind of thing. And for one, the schools won't invest, at least not in South Carolina, in any kind of arts or theater, which is sad. But when I've gone in and I've worked with kids, middle school kids, it's actually been quite eye opening for me because really as adults, we're still middle school kids, if that makes yeah. sense, like the way we treat people and our mindset and putting kids through these improv exercises. I saw these little dynamic personalities of literally there were some that were kind of like little baby bullies, like. You could see how they would treat the kid who was a little bit different from everybody. Yeah. Like there was a girl who was very theatrical and she couldn't wait to play games. And then and then the other kids are snickering. I was like, wow. Yeah. That to me was a little bit heartbreaking of like, you know, they've been I don't, we're born that way. I don't know. Yeah. We're wired that way or conditioned that way. But could you imagine if we really could have that impact at that age? what kind of adults they would end up being like i can meet an adult and know exactly what kind of child they were i don't know about the rest of you <laughs> yeah, yes. I, agree. Yes. I, I hope you didn't yes. me the first time we yes. did that you'd be like yeah. oh my god well, I was I, that cool. well and i think there was something you both said gary and gina it strikes me too just because i've worked in my son's school and and i they don't call it improv but that's what i'm teaching the kids and they love it and i think there's something about the self-esteem and it's it, we not only do we see yes. status and there's, there's a concept in improv yeah. called status. We see them as like ourselves and equal status, mm -hmm. but the self-esteem, and I think kids with healthy self-esteem just flat out don't bully. They don't feel the need to do that. And yeah. so there's something about- Yeah, that's a great point. Self-esteem that when you know you have create, you, you work in your creative mojo and you're, you're capable and you believe in your ideas, you're just not gonna be the, the kid that grows into the sadly adult who then bullies, um, you know? Yeah. That's a really good point because I, you know, we don't talk, we talk about so much, so many things that come out of improv, but I've never really t talked about the self esteem piece for adults in general. But that's a really great point because improv teaches us how to accept other people's ideas and accept our own ideas and not feel bad when someone else has an idea that we're there to support. So, so our self esteem has to be intact to be a good improviser because yeah. otherwise, we're gonna suck as a partner on stage <laughs> yeah. or in life. Yeah. And so your self-esteem is just has to be there because you're like, all right, so it's not my idea today. It's John's idea. That's cool. I'm okay with that. Great. Let's let me support him. And it's like it just you build your self-esteem muscle. I never even thought about yeah. that. Yeah, that's good stuff. Hey, so um, Evolved Photo shot us over a message. I don't know if you guys could see this also, but it says just to play the devil's advocate, you think if improv was in say high school. It would get wrapped in with the bandos. There, I'm not, and I'm I'm 47. I don't know what the bandos is, but thereby reducing the cool factor. Seems like any self expression, oh, marching band, yeah. self expression uh, that isn't popular or trendy tends to get si singled out. Absolutely, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. For him, the but anybody can get singled out, right? Yeah. Like you're a jock, you're singled out. You're in the band, you're singled out. You're techie, you're singled out. I think I think we have a tendency to single everybody out because it's just what we do. Yeah. 
Uh, and there's a lot of schools, you know, one of our teachers at Carolina Improv, she was a middle school teacher and she did theater sports for years. You know, there are, there are a lot of schools that are very into improv as teams that that compete against each other. So, you know, it also depends on what part of the world or country that you're in. Yeah, and how it's introduced, because I coached a high school improv team and that was, yeah, wrapped in with theater. And yeah, they had had its own perception. Uh, but to what Kathy was talking about is that if you're trying to bring this in as a tool to help people collaborate better, you don't necessarily have to call it improv. Um, exactly. You can just say, hey, we're yeah. playing some games that are going to be fun and blah, blah, blah. And what kid doesn't want to get out of class to goof around for a bit? Oh yeah, and adults. Well, and adults that's too, a great point. You know, adults. Uh, yeah, you know? I was. Go ahead, Gina. Yeah, I was say cat catapulting on that, getting into the corporate thing. I think we're along the same lines, which kind of wraps it all back up together. Part of my frustration has been, thus we created Pivot Ten. Mm -hmm is that they don't want to hear the word improv in business. Yes, yes. And I've, I've been experimenting lately with going in and doing some training, like my mission to message workshop that I do. I never say the word improv, yes. but we do improv. And I never yeah. talk about it, but we're teaching communication skills. I have, I have a session now called communication frustration. I'm not talking about improv. I'm talking about the outcomes I'm going to deliver yeah. as a result of the experiential learning. Yes, I'm so with you. In fact, I was just going to say, yeah, I'm so with you. I don't even tell half the time I'm working, especially with technical teams. I don't even say improv because nothing scares engineers and technical people <laughs> out yes. of their minds yes. and saying, we're going to do improv because they hear theatrical performance. And you and I and Gary know yep. that that's not what it is. That's what they hear. So there are many times right. I will go into a company and I never even use the word improv, but that's what it is. So I don't care yeah. what you call it. I just care that the people get the benefit from it. You know what I mean? And some people, exactly. are, some teams are just more open to hearing it as improv. And some teams right. are scared to death if you call it improv. And I don't care what well, you, you know, call it. <laughs> well, you know what's, what's interesting, and this has happened to me, um, and maybe I'm just more aware of it lately. You know, we were called in by a Fortune 500 company to bid on um, – training on a regular basis so it would be 17 sessions a year and once you got in you were in and they called me because they did a google search they find they found carolina improv we went through a bid process it took 15 months they hired a different company instead of us ultimately which is was an improv company which is cool uh, but in the proposal and presentation process the feedback i got was well we just kind of felt like you were too much improv mm. and i said but you searched for improv for business <laughs> on Google and found Carolina improv. <laughs> and so their concern was, how will you water this down if you get the contract? And I'm like, all right, not, not our ideal client. So. Yeah. Why and did you search for improv? <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and, the, and the other feedback we got was they didn't like that we made them do an improv exercise during the pitch process. I'm like, wow. did the other companies not do that? Yeah. Like, don't you want to know what you're getting? And so they ultimately hired a company that never brought whatever. It's yeah. it's it's constantly evolving on giving yeah. people, selling people what they want, getting there and then giving them what they need. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think some people have had bad experiences too, to your point, because Gina, I'm laughing because I, I so identify with what you're saying. I, I walked into a situation where I was brought in because they went with another company in the past. And so there's there's a there's an exercise that I know Gary and Gina will laugh at. It's called I am a tree. I am a tree. And then you know, and people <laughs> I mean, and I can't fault them. Their technical team could not make the leap to how, do, how does playing I am a tree going to help me be better yeah. at my job? And that is because the debrief and the outcomes and the edge, the learning objectives were not sewn up by think the, by the other company. So they had, so the problem was, is they didn't, yeah. they didn't believe in improv. They, they stopped thinking about improv as being effective. So I had to fight that battle of improv as being legitimate, you know? Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, they don't do well with I am a tree. They don't. No. <laughs> and, and and that's, yeah, and that's unfortunate. But then, so if improv is the thing that gets in the way, I said, let's not talk about improv. Let's just talk about making yeah. them better communicators. Yeah. So, yeah, what's your yeah. challenge? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
I think that's the biggest, I think that should be the biggest aha for anybody in the applied improv world. We, you know, we, we keep coming up with new terms on how to position ourselves. I use experiential learning, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it's improv is just one tool yeah. in a trainer's toolbox yes. to get to a specific outcome. Amen. Um, and so how do we position that? You know, again, I told a story earlier about, um, being booked for a national conference as a keynote speaker. And they had ignored my proposal for years because they thought I was a comedian. And so they didn't want to book me because they thought I was a comedian. But once somebody went to listen to me and they said, oh my gosh, you're so engaging and educational. That's what we want. And so you, you again, you listen and you go, okay, how do I continue to sell that? that mm -hmm. we are educational and we are yeah. engaging and we'll keep your audience engaged and we will teach them. And I don't have to talk about improv. Yeah. Of course. So. Amen, amen, For religion, Ooh. 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 preach it. <laughs> Sister I, Gina, Sister Gina. The gospel of improv. <laughs> I just think that folks that, I think any business, uh, businesses, it doesn't have to be a business, it could be a person. I think if anyone adopts this philosophy and this uh, culture, of, of, of being getting outside their comfort zone at the end of the day is what we're talking about, right? Is because we, we get so programmed is that they're going to um, be more successful and not just business. It's going to be more successful with their relationships with their family. Maybe it's brothers and sisters and siblings and their parents and their wife. Or how about their children? We have such a disconnect in today's society where we, 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 we don't relate with the kids, right? It's like what was pretty cool is yesterday I said Starbucks, Gina, is that I try to relate with the kids. I'm probably I'm the 47 year old kid that takes selfies with them. Right. <laughs> we were taking selfies. We were taking selfies for Instagram at Starbucks yesterday. That is so nice. cool. nice. And the, the girl, the girl that was helping us, she actually said, oh, I, I've been to your house, Mr. Cassidy. She knows my daughter. And I said, oh, well, we got to do a selfie together. Right. So, boom. <laughs> And uh, it was just, I think just by doing that, uh, yeah. that, you know, it's about having fun, Gary. I yep. mean, I, I love what you do because yeah. you're all of you guys are telling people have friggin' fun, man. Quit making things so hard. You know, one of the best things I ever heard from, from a, a successful business guy was that, you know, you're not, you're not doing surgery. You're not going to kill anybody. <clears throat> Why don't you have fun at it? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Right? We print. You know, and boy, do I get upset if we make an error on someone's printing project. Yesterday, like, uh, I guess it was Thursday, was a uh, <clears throat> double shot Thursday. Everything we had, we did came out wrong. Right. We had to do it over again and over again. And yeah, we can get really pissed off about it, but what does it do for everybody else? It gets them all uncomfortable, right? Yes. Yeah. Make it fun. Yeah, exactly. You know? Can, the big, I think, wh where do we learn from that is when you make a mistake, well, Mistakes suck, but what about it, it sucks if the customer finds that mistake, right? Yeah. If you find it beforehand, you can learn about it. How do we fix it so it doesn't happen again? Let's get fun. Let's get creative. Let's let's use improv to fix that stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. The Absolutely. saying is failure is success. Failure is success if you learn from it. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Yeah. And even if you're you do make a mistake, you know. Customers, if you own the mistake, and you know, Johnny, you know, Gary, I mean, it's like, if you, every, to err is human. If you own it and you say, we're sorry and we'll fix it, we'll make it right. Yep. Most people get it. It's when companies just don't own it and care and fix it. And so it's not the worst thing in the world to try new things. And even if it doesn't, you know, work with your customer, most customers appreciate that you're trying something different. I, th I think. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And just to be human. Yeah. And what a concept. <laughs> so what about, what about um, some, some, like, some activities that people can do? Like, what, what, tell us your routine. Like, what makes you creative? What in the morning? Let's say I want to start uh, changing some things and I want to get better at, at improv. And, and, and we're trying not to use that word, but maybe create more creativity in my life. What are some things that you'd suggest to the people that are watching us right now? Like that could, they could see some immediate change in their life. That they start doing. Yeah. I have two, two exercises that uh, if you work on it for a minimum of a month, it will have dramatic changes. Uh, one is 
you make an idea of what you give yourself a prompt and then you just for like five minutes just write as many things that um, fits on that prompt uh, and what you're doing is you're just getting better at coming up with ideas and don't judge them because in the beginning they're probably going to suck uh, but just get good at just coming up with ideas and letting yourself be vulnerable and you'll eventually that you're just working a muscle your idea muscle and so when it comes time to actually implement that whether it be in business or whatever you will just be more comfortable with doing that so that's the first part and then the second is word association so now what you're doing is you're helping your brain make connections because our brain that's how our brain works so i do this on my commute to the office is i'll just see something like a traffic sign and then uh the first thing that comes to mind with traffic sign is um laws and the first thing that after laws is government and after that is corruption and then like whatever it is whatever you say is correct <laughs> but you just get better at just coming up with um like just different ideas from just one prompt. Cool, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, Gabby? yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, those are great suggestions. I, I, I riff it off what Gary says. I love to just, um, when I'm brainstorming, I love to mind map. If you're familiar with mind mapping, it's just, you know, write something down and see where it leads and see all the different branches. And I've got, you know, crazy whiteboards in my office. You can't see them right now with all kinds of mind maps. And it allows yourself to really just, you know, go, as Gary says, just spend 10, 15 minutes doing it. No judging the idea. Never judge. That's what your family is for. Don't judge yourself. Um, yes, and everything that comes to your brain. Just yes, and yourself and write as many things down as possible. I also like to, um, you know, um, as Gary says, just try different things. There's, there's a really great fun exercise that I love, love, love from, from improv. And it's just called object freeze. And it's just, it frees up your brain uh, to think different things. So like I might take my iPhone and say, all right, an iPhone was designed for talking on the phone, but what if we use this for something other than what it was designed to do? Like how many uses can we find for this object? Maybe it's a drool catcher, you know, maybe, an ironing board. maybe it's a sled for my cat. Maybe it's an ironing board, right? Maybe it's a defibrillator for my dog, <laughs> whatever it is, because then you're going to open the spigot after about five minutes of just how many things you can come up with. Your brain starts to go, yeah, I'm in a groove. I'm in a groove and anybody can do it. And it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Love that. Gina. I think for me, um, it would, it would be in the writing realm. Um, I love to blog about the ordinary things and then drill them down into other things. So I, I actually was giving advice to a client on this yesterday about the importance of blogging and putting yourself out there. And she said, but I don't want to, you know, I don't really want to blog about business because that doesn't seem, you know, connective and personal. And I'm like, have you read my blogs? Like my, <laughs> my, my most recent blog is about my cowboy boots, right? And it's about how my cowboy boots are made for talking, not walking, because every time I wear them, someone stops me to talk about my freaking boots. That's awesome. So I now wear the boots I, everywhere I can to have conversations with people. So I'll take that kind of like little thing, like any experience that I have anywhere, like a customer service experience, or I look at every interaction I have in life as an opportunity to explore and drill it down further, which is something that we learn in improv as well is how do you drill it down? If this, then what, if this, then what, and if this, then what, and I take that concept and I write about it because I find it, funny about people being so obsessed with my boots. And so I will relate it back to how do you, how does this show up in your own business? How are you standing out that gets attention organically without you really doing anything but showing up in your boots? And so that for me is like my creative, like that gets my brain going mm -hmm. and performing. You know, I own a theater. Um, you know, managing 30 performers is quite the um, adventure and creativity, yeah. so to speak. And um, as a result of that, I don't always get to perform because I'm running the other parts of the business. But tonight I'm performing. So if anyone's in Myrtle Beach, um, Carolina Girls is performing tonight. It's our all-girl troupe. So performing is actually really helpful. Not that everybody is going to go do some performance, but go take an improv class. Yes. Go do something that that unlocks your creativity. For me, performing once a month keeps me sharp. Yeah. And it keeps me yes-anding people, and it keeps me really sharp for speaking. Yes. So I try to perform at least once a month to keep my chops going. Yeah, yes. you got to yes. sharpen, sharpen the axe, sharpen the axe, right? right. It's the tools oh. of the trade, the tools of the trade. Yes. Yeah.
Yeah. All right. So I, I know you guys have been on for a while, but I, I want to wrap up with a couple other things really fast is that I want to show some of the folks that are on here and they're not familiar with the improv, this uh, word association or, or, or one of these little things with us. How about this will be the first improv uh, performance on Blab, right? So we're making friggin' history, man. It actually, it actually has not been because Gary and I did this a couple of months ago. <laughs> this is the first improv of the Naked Truth. Yes. And Gina, okay. And Gina's, I've done, done it. and Gina's done it. I've done it. I've done it. Yeah. So, but, but we're with you in spirits. <laughs> yes, Anne. Let's yes, do this. Yes. Let's do yes. it. Let's do it. First one on Naked Truth. Let's do right, the so first one for Naked Truth. What are we gonna do? You guys got. You're the leaders. Why don't you guys roll with this? Do you have a preference on how you want to do a, a, a yes hand? I mean, a, a word association? Uh, I think, every, does everybody see the screen that I see? So uh, John is up on the upper left hand and Gina's on the upper right hand and Kathy's on the... Uh, <laughs> <is he looking>? <laughs> <laughs> on the lower left and Gary's on the lower left. Well, we, what we can do, um, and Gary and Kathy jump in on this, um, the way we do a word association in a circle with our team is... We start out with a word and you basically have to, it'll be interesting doing it here, be connected enough. It doesn't have to go in a certain order. It's the first word that comes to mind that someone's going to respond. And and if we both respond at the same time, one of us has to give it up. So it continues. Cool. We usually start with a word and we come back to the same word going as far out as we can. Word associate as far away as possible and then bring it back to the original word. I, I throw it to Kathy and Gary for their input. I'm good. I'm good with yeah. any of those. I'm good with, um, yeah, absolutely. Right. Gary, you good with yeah, that? Let's roll. Let's do it. All right, John. John, why don't you start us with the word that will be the beginning and the end of this exercise? Oh, man. Mints. <laughs> Teeth. Meat. Chew. Tobacco. Tobacco. Oh. Oh. Nicotine. TV commercials. Smoky. Cowboy. Horse. Marlboro Man. Stirrups. Boots. Doctor. Nurse. Doctor, nurse, ER, emergency, oh. ambulance, operation, lawyer, <laughs> case, lawsuit, jail, bail, bonds. Was that bonds? Bonds. Bail bonds. Got it. Bank. Cash. Green. Mint. Yay! Yay! That is awesome. Yeah. That's cool. So for our friends that are That's watching, it. that is how fun you can start your morning. You imagine you start your morning off at your office with your team doing that what did it take us it literally took us what two minutes three minutes yeah. to do that yeah. it's fun it's exciting it's re-energizing and that's the whole thing about improv guys i think that you know this could really help your business and your family imagine doing this with your family instead of watching right. friggin the bachelor yeah yeah thanks and john i think i think I think what's really important is Gary said this earlier, and I know Kathy agrees with this and I agree with it. The, as fun as that was, the magic really is in the debrief mm -hmm. of what we just did. Yeah. So I would be curious as to your experience with what we just did, John, and mm. like what, what transpired for you? Mm. Well, for me, it was, I found myself listening more because I wanted to try to figure out what was going to be clever to associate the word with. So, Interesting. Yeah. So obviously you probably saw me lean lean in. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> I was going to listen, but I, 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 what I really thought was cool too is I found myself analyzing you, yeah. each one of you guys, to see what direction you were going in, uh, just to I because uh, um, Gary and, and Kathy, I, the first time I met you, so trying to figure out what type of people you are and, and personality. So I was trying to relate that to what the things you were going to, you know. Yeah. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you guys, so what I want to go down really quick and we'll wrap this up is that Kathy, how can people reach out to you? How can they connect with you? They can go to my, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, they can go to uh, my website, keepingithuman.com. They can follow me on Twitter at Kathy Clotes guest, no hyphen in between. Those are two really great ways. Thank you. And Gary. Yeah. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Ware. there's no one uh, on Twitter and um you know breakthroughplay.com uh you can sign up there and um find out what's going on um if you're into digital uh tower33.digital is the website there breakthrough play t h o u r g h yes breakthrough play great and gina how can we get a hold of you you can follow me on Twitter at Gina Sales Coach. Um, as you know, we are in transition right now in our brand. Our pivot10results.com website is um, under construction right now for our training side, but you could go to improviseyourbusiness.com or you could go to ginaandcompany.com. There's many ways to find me or carolinaimprov.com. I have multiple identities. <laughs> and, uh, well, I do appreciate you guys and everybody. You can definitely find me uh, at uh, duplicatesinc.com. Inc. is with an I-N-K. We are working on getting the naked truth dot biz up and running where we can have these blabs uh, so you can see it and just some some different things there. Uh, and guys, I, I, I really am proud to be able to do this today with you guys. I want to, I, I, I've been wrapping things up this way. Let's get naked. So if we're going to get naked, we're going to need to shut up and listen. We're going to need to, we're going to need to play more to recharge. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. We're, we're going to work with our, our teams and our families just to get better on our listening skills and do these exercises so we can grow to another level and get past that leadership lid that we've hit. And, guys, I want to thank you all so, so very much for doing this. And we're here every Monday and every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, this is The Naked Truth, and I appreciate you all. Thank you. Awesome. So much fun. Thank you. Thank all of you. Awesome. Yeah, we'll talk recording for everybody and I'll shoot it over to you. Thank y'all. Thanks. Bye. Rock and roll. <laughs>